and friends, I'd like to take this moment and thank you for coming out and taking part in this tribute to a wonderful and sincere man of God, my father, Louis Woolley Sr. But before I get started, I want to thank Pastor Chris for allowing us to use the church here for the services. I would like to thank Mont and Tim for the work that they've done in setting all of this up. I want to thank Mary for the time she spent laboring with him during the last portion of his life, taking care of him, feeding him, and doing everything that is necessary. I want to thank Pastor Bull for setting in proxy of me since I cannot personally be there. I want to thank each and every one of you church members and I want to thank the family for your prayers and your concern. I want to thank this, the wives of all of my brothers and uh, the husband of my sister for their support knowing full well that they would have stepped up to the plate, uh, given a chance, called upon without hesitation. And in fact, I know that they have actually done that throughout this home-going process of my dad. It is an interesting truth when you sit there and begin to meditate over scripture and a loved one at the same time. Which I had done considering what I was about to do today and to share this opportunity. What verse of scripture best describes this man of God? And the one that kept coming back to mind after looking through many different uh, portions of scripture, reading them, praying, spending some time before the Lord, is found in Micah 6, 8, which reads, He has shown the old man to be good, and what does the Lord require of thee? What is God asking from you in order to have you live that good life? That is to do justly, to show mercy, and to walk humbly before God. I remember throughout the years even before he called upon Jesus, these virtues were deep in his heart. They were something that he wanted to portray to his children, to raise them up properly. The Bible says that if you raise your children in fear and admonition of God, that they would not quickly depart from the truth which is certain, a certain testimony of my dad to raise five children, four men and a lady in the streets of Youngstown and to have all of them today loving Jesus with all of their heart, soul, and mind. What a beautiful job that he did. I spoke with him often in his last days. Uh, he would share with me truths about the return of God, about the end times, the eschatology in which we live in. And even though he had gone in and out uh, due to the pain and his refusal of taking certain medications, he spoke very lucid and was able to recall many different 
things that has happened over the years. I know that he loved his family. He loved his children. He loved his grandchildren. He loved his great-grandchildren. And you know what's exciting? They all loved him. The One of the most recent phone calls, my father had always presented a wonderful Christmas gift. He and my mother both throughout the years. And he says to my wife and myself, I don't think I'll be able to participate in giving you the Christmas gift this year. And uh, tears came to my eye, not because I wasn't getting a gift, but because even on his deathbed, all he could do was think about others and what they were going through. And we shared with him, oh, we love the gifts, but the gift of being able to talk to him was the greatest one that we could have at the time. He has showed the old man what is good, to do justly. One of the things I've learned from my father was to be a just man, to be fair in all of my dealings. When somebody in a grocery store or a business or something along those lines would overpay me. I would not walk away thinking I just won the lottery. I would quickly go back and return the money that they overgave me because that's <coughs> justice. That's doing justly. Just the other week I went to the store and I wanted to purchase a number of items and I one of them was a can opener. And when I had got home, I realized that it had dropped in the basket and that I never paid for it. I could not wait to get back to the store in order to give them the money for that can opener. I wasn't there to impress anyone. I wasn't there to say, hey, look at me. I'm a good person. I was there because God required of me in order to be a good man that I do justly. The next thing it says is to show mercy. I don't know of any occasion that my dad was never quick to show mercy on. Even if somebody was rude to him, ignorant towards him, said nasty things about him, that he would just love them and show them mercy. I was reading through the comments uh, that people made concerning the uh, death announcement that I put on the internet, and one of them said that he would always come to us Ohio, and that he always had a smile on his face. And that's one of the things you can certainly remember about my dad. He was always smiling. You could be mean, you could be cruel, but he's just going to return that with a merciful smile. I've learned that I wish to show mercy. The Bible tells me, Judge not, lest ye be judged in the same manner. I do not want God to judge me the way I would judge other people. I will show them mercy, for that is the way God does it. His mercies are renewed every day. And my dad was certain to show mercy in dealing with anyone, no matter what took place. Oh, I could sit here and regale story after story after story of the great justifications that my dad has done, the great shows of mercy that he has committed. But we would be here all night. One stands out to mind when he was a police officer. There was a young man who came by and was 
doing something and came running towards my dad to attack him. My dad pulled out the gun, his gun and he did not fire. He showed the guy mercy. The guy received the mercy. And from what I understand is living the good life today. The good life. Live the good life. Which consists of doing justice, showing mercy. And lastly, is to humble yourself and to walk humbly before God. I cannot tell you the number of times I have heard people in all of my dealings with uh, the addictions, well, when I see God, I'm going to tell him this is how it's going to be. No. God says, humble yourself. Realize who you are. In fact, this passage tells us, He has shown you, O oh mortal. How can me, as a mortal man, have a relationship with the eternal God. And I need to humble myself. I heard a saying one time, if you get proud, go and stand by the ocean and learn how insignificantly small you are compared the, to the Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean. William Shatner, we all know him, have enjoyed his television career on Star Trek and Boston Legal, had the opportunity to fly into outer space. When he came back, he had an epiphany compared to all of God's vast creation. We are so insignificant. However, compared to God's love, we are extremely important. And that's what my dad lived. He lived a high fidelity, a sound reproduction of Christ Jesus. That when you looked at him like a tree planted by the water, he was not to be moved. Through trials and tribulations, he wasn't about to quit or to give in or to give up. That he lived the way he spoke. That he lived a just life. A merciful life. And I want to challenge each one of you today to take that mantle upon yourself. You know how to be good, O oh mortal. To do justice. To show mercy and to walk humbly before your God. Thank you.